Welcome back to the Graham Stephan Show. My name is Graham and welcome to my show and two things this morning. Number one, I'm trying out something new. Instead of having my iced coffee in one of those glasses sitting here, I'm going to have it in one of these because the issue with my glasses is that uh, condensation gets out of control and within like a minute, all of a sudden there's a whole pool of water around it and then the coffee gets all messed up and it's just, it's not fun. So I'm trying this and this keeps it extra cool, which is uh, very nice. And number two, we got a new episode of Millennial Money to watch and uh, obviously critique and review. It's been a while since we did a Millennial Money episode. I don't know why. CNBC lately has been dragging their feet. It's been like a week and a half, maybe even two weeks since they posted the last episode of Millennial Money. But today we got this. It is called Living Together on dollar sign eight seven k a year in Toronto. Wait for it, millennial money. Now, one of the things you have to keep in mind when it comes to uh, Canadian money is that every one dollar uh, United States, every one dollar United States, every one dollar USD buys you about a dollar thirty-six Canadian. So, if they're making eighty-seven thousand dollars a year in uh, Toronto, that's the equivalent of making about sixty-four thousand dollars in the United States. Now, one of the things that I really like about Canada is that overall, I believe, their cost of living is a lot less than here in the United States. So anyway, with that said, let's watch this episode and uh, see what it's all about after you guys smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Thank you very much, and we'll begin. I think that being financially compatible doesn't even necessarily mean that you have the same financial goals or background, but it just means that you're of the same comfortability with being open and actually talking about it and future goals as well. Wait a second, that makes absolutely no sense. So she's saying financial compatibility is not having the same goals, but instead just having the ability to talk about them together. That doesn't make any sense. We could talk about having completely opposite goals. We could be totally financially incompatible. I would want to save all the money, and uh, the other person might want to spend all the money, but just because we could talk about it rationally does not make us compatible. I believe financial compatibility is about having the same goals and objectives and being able to discuss those thoughts with each other. And that's what it's really about. If you don't have the same goals and objectives for your money, and you don't have the same beliefs about money, that to me is financial incompatibility. So I, I don't know what she's, what she's referring to there. I'm Dennis and I'm 24 years old and I make $58,000 Canadian a year. My name's Steph, I just turned 24 years old and I make $60,000 Canadian a year. Combined, we make $118,000 Canadian a year. Whoa, they, uh, they got us there. They got us there, so they already did the calculation. Why would they, why would they do that? I would say, uh, when I see $87,000 in Toronto, you would assume that they're making $87,000, not $120,000 and then converted back to USD. I would have preferred them just saying they make 120 something thousand dollars a year in Toronto. That would make more sense. That would make more sense to me than converting that to USD. So I think given the companies that we work for and given that we you know, work for companies that are external facing and rely on a lot of clients in order to make money. Ooh, he's making coffee at home. Oh, I like this. I like this, you could tell. I think he's gonna be really smart with money. That's what I think. For us, you know, job security was definitely a big thing that we were worried about and you know, we're still worried about right now, but I think as time progresses and as our companies and we adjust to the climate, I think things are sort of getting better and better. You know what, I actually watched a Dave Ramsey episode the other day. Believe it or not, I watch almost all of the Dave Ramsey. He posts like four or five times a day, it's crazy. But I'm always sitting there, they're short videos, so I watch them all at two times speed, and I listen to a lot of them. He says that sometimes the best job security is your own ability to go out there and make money. And that's very true, sometimes you can't rely on an employer, sometimes it's better just to rely on yourself, because at the end of the day, your ability to make money is entirely on you. And I agree with that. I think sometimes you are your own best job security. So Dave Ramsey, uh, props to you, that, that is very true. And that, that applies here too. I didn't really have an emergency fund or an emergency fund that had really anticipated a climate like this. A lot of the money that I was pushing towards my student loans, I've sort of been able to dial that back and actually put that into savings just in case anything happens. All right, let's see. I like how they did the uh, conversion from CAD to USD. So here we go. So we got rent. $1,364. Is that, is, I'm guessing that's total. That's gotta be total. Rent in Canada, oh man. Part of me just, just you look at it. Now even though, yeah, they have a, a bit of a higher tax rate, but like, you look at some of the cost of things, and it's like, wow, I mean, your money goes a long way there, except Vancouver. Vancouver's the one spot that's like, it, it's expensive, Vancouver's expensive. But anyway, rent, $1,364 a month, that, that's phenomenal. 
Savings, $1,342 a month. That is really good. Oh no, oh no guys. Debt repayment, $958 a month. Ah, and then we got, uh, what is that? Dens Student Loans. Ah, goes to show you, no matter which country you live, student loans are inescapable. I mean, if they just, they get you. They always get you and you can't hide. You can't hide from student loans. $950, I, I wonder how much he owes on that. Okay, then we got food, $479 a month, groceries, restaurants, coffee shops. They did that just, just to upset me. They did that because they knew that was gonna rile me up coffee shops. Why would they throw that in? How, do, how much did they spend on coffee shops for it to literally be in here, to be in this calculation? Oh well, okay, then we got transportation, $148 a month. That is a uh, transit passes. Okay, that's, that's fine. Utilities and Wi-Fi, they get uh, $109 a month. You know, in Canada, they call it hydro. This fun fact of the day, they always call that the, the hydro bill. Uh, yeah, so $109 a month. Phone, uh, 105, that's okay. Health insurance, oh, wow, look at this. Only in Canada, guys, only in Canada. Uh, $52 a month for health insurance. Here in the United States, I'm sure for their coverage would be, I don't know, three fifty, four hundred bucks. Uh, so yeah, Canada, way to, go, way to go on that. Subscriptions, $60 a month. Netflix, Spotify, Adobe. Epidemic sounds, hmm, okay. And then renter's insurance, $17 a month. Okay, it's decent. Honestly, it's decent. The only thing that I would have to critique here is the debt repayment. That's the only thing that I don't like from this in the coffee shops. Besides that, it's okay. So when it comes to budgeting, every month we look at our transactions and we see where we were spending in each category. But we try to make sure that we know where every single dollar is going and we usually use the Mint app. Oh, here we go. I see, I feel like it wasted all this time because I didn't see the thing in the upper left where it said February, so now in July, rent stayed the same. Savings, they boosted that up. That's, that's fantastic, that's what they should be doing. It looks like they got rid of the debt repayment. Way to go on that, so I can't complain about that anymore. Savings got boosted way up, food went up a little bit. Okay, okay that's fine, but they cut out the coffee shops. And uh, in the savings, they got high yield account, index funds, dense retirement. I can't complain about that. Everything else, for the most part, stayed the same. Congratulations. They, they took my advice in the span of seconds without me even needing to say it months later. They're psychic. Now, I wonder what that was like living and working from home in a one bedroom apartment together. You know, I would say that like it, it's maybe not a lot of space for two people if you're both working from home. But I, I, again, I don't, I don't know. We've been living together for two years now and we're planning to continue that, uh, but we don't personally feel the need to have any sort of joint accounts. So we have completely separate accounts. We split all of our expenses right down the middle. It's just what works best for us. It works for our budgets so that we can really plan it out. Yeah, you know what? I would say that's pretty reasonable too. I mean, they're both making about the same thing. So, you know, I actually think that that's probably a smart choice to do. So I think one of the huge misconceptions about school in Canada is that schooling is free. Well, guess what? It is not free. Gosh, very few places is schooling ever paid for or free. Canada is certainly not one of them. Canada can be very expensive depending on, on where you go. So. And after 11 months, I'd already paid down over half of the amount. So on a typical month, I actually throw close to 50% of my income towards my debt. Yeah, way to go for him. I mean, he's sharp. I mean, he's, he's definitely doing a lot right. There's very little that I can complain about that. I look at that. He's reading The Intelligent Investor by Benjamin Graham. Great book, great last name by the way, <laughs> I like that too. So I've actually been able to dial that back and throw that money into savings just because they put a halt on, you know, having to pay back your debt up until I think September of this year. Nice, there we go. So see, he's taking advantage of it. He's doing the smart thing to do. If he's not required to pay any interest on that, go put your money in a savings account. Go and do something else. Earn a little bit of money on that. And then when you have to pay interest, you put it back in the, in the student loans. Because of the pandemic, we're actually going to one of the more expensive grocery stores near us. Definitely something that we're choosing to do. It's not a necessity, uh, but it's cleaner. There's more measures in place. We know that the hours are a little bit better. It's, it's easier for us to go there right now. So our budget's gone up by maybe 50 to $75 a month uh, for each of us. Uh, that's fine. I think if the food is probably a little bit healthier for you too, you're buying like higher quality foods. I don't see any issues. I mean, they can afford it. They can absolutely afford it. It's, it's not, like, uh, not like my budget. 
you know, where, where if, if it's just me, it's just like frozen foods. It's horrible, but whatever. The main thing that I knew growing up is that you save half of your money, you save more than you spend, you live within your means, you pay off any debt you have right away. Um, my parents were, were debt free even on their house as soon as they possibly could be. So that was something that was really drove, driven into me. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I, I like the, the save half of what you make. I'm surprised that's not uh, taught more. And I get, like, a lot of people can't save half of their income. I, I, I understand that. But, but I, it seems like when, when I was growing up, it, almost always I was told, like, you know, save, like, 5 to 10% of what you make. Like, 5 to 10 I'm thinking, like, 5 to 10%. Why? Why would I spend almost all the money I make, only save, like, 5 to 10%? Like, it, it blows my mind. So I like the 50, I, lo I love the 50% approach. I'm not sure I agree with this, the pay off all debt as soon as possible, mortgage-free. He follows the Dave Ramsey approach. I think there's something to be said about just the mindset of being completely debt-free, having money in the bank, no obligations. It's a nice feeling, but I think to leverage your money and learn how to do that properly can make you way more in the future. You know, obviously me coming from a family that didn't really have much, whereas, you know, Steph's family, like she said, her dad was an accountant and, you know, they were very savings focused and kind of knew what, you know, what they were doing with their money, right? So I think sort of looking at that variation and seeing the dynamic was, you know, one of our early conversations. That's good. I think uh, having that financial talk very early on, I, I think that's one of the most important things any like serious couple can talk about because money is very important. How, how are you going to handle the finances? Who's going to save what? What do you guys both want in the future? If one person's like, I'm all about saving and the other person's like, no, you got to live in the moment. You got to live in the moment. Spend now. You never... It's not going to work. It's not gonna work or, or someone's gonna be very unhappy. That's what it's gonna come down to. So I, I think having that talk early on is very important. So because Dan and I live together, a lot of our fixed expenses are the same and we split them down the middle. One place that we definitely differ is my coffee budget. Uh, he should run. He should run immediately. I hear coffee budget. I'm out. I'm out, guys. I gotta go. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Let's see how much. Let's see how much she spends on coffee. That's not a good sign. <laughs> I used to spend a lot more before I started budgeting on coffee, as I'm sure a lot of people do. Wait, she's only spending thirty-seven dollars a month on coffee. That's really not that bad. I was assuming it's gonna be like a hundred dollars a month. Is it thirty-seven bucks a month on coffee? Is is really? It's, it's not bad at all. During the pandemic, I luckily haven't been spending any. We make all of our coffee at home, but I'm sure it's a habit that will probably come back. So for me, I refuse to spend money on new clothes. I refuse to spend money on coffee. Woo! I like them. I like them a lot. That's what I say. Clothes, kind of silly. You know, this is one of my uh, one of my like three dollar H and M shirts. You could you could always tell it's H and M, by the way, because uh, I'm not sure if you can see on camera the collar gets all like messed up. I mean, it, the collars are really bad quality at H&M, but uh, honestly, I, lo I love the shirts. I love the shirts. Coffee, I agree with them on the, the car thing. I like, I like cars though. I really like cars. I mean, if I had a garage, I don't have a garage right now, and, that, and that's the downside, but if I have a garage, like one day I would love to get like a, a one of those Ford GTs, like a 2006 Ford GT. I would love that. And those are cars too, they keep their value. So you could buy a Ford GT, you could park it, you could look at it, it looks beautiful. And then whenever you need the money, you could sell it for about the same price you bought it for, if not more, if not more. Oh, one day, one day I'll have a garage. Before we get started, destroy the like button. Woo! Oh, Steph and Dan, okay, wait, wait, wait. Okay, so let me go and subscribe really quick. We're gonna, we're gonna do this. Steph and Dan, Steph and Dan, Steph and Dan. Let's see, Steph and Dan, Steph and Dan. It sounds like you're saying Steph and Dan, like Graham Stephan, Steph and Dan. Let's see if they've commented on my channel, let's see. Uh, I always do this, anytime you have a YouTube channel, what you could do is you go to the comments and then you could type in the username and you'll see how many times they've commented. So Steph and Den, I don't see any comments from Steph and Den. Steph and Den, have you not commented on my channel ever? I don't see any comments from Steph, Steph and Den. Uh, okay, anyway, let, let's keep watching. The main reason we started was, at least for me, was because I saw a gap in the knowledge when it came to money and you know, sort of finances here in Canada. Yeah, that's very true. You know what? I've noticed very few Canadian YouTubers out there who focus on, uh, uh, you know, finance for, for Canadians. I'll say uh, Matt McKeever. 
find one of the best channels out there for real estate, Matt McKeever, and then I really like Mike Rosehart's channel. I think those two, Jeff Weibo, a little bit more focused towards real estate agents, but those three that, that I watch and know of, phenomenal channels. Oh, it will generate revenue pretty soon. I mean, they're at like almost 6,000 subscribers at this point. They're gonna get the watch time pretty soon and then they can start making some sweet, sweet money. I have a feeling they're probably gonna make, uh, you know, a few hundred bucks a month at the, at, at, at the baseline, a few hundred dollars a month, and then it's just gonna go up from there. Each month I'm saving, my goal is 50% of my income. So basically I get paid bi-weekly. I'm trying to save one full payment each month and I'm putting it right now into a savings account, but I'm planning on switching into a high interest savings account too to really capitalize and hopefully grow that savings as well each month. That's awesome. Congratulations. They're both doing a really good job for from what I could tell. I, I wanna know now, how much do they have saved and invested? How much? What are the amounts? How much do you have in the savings account? Let's find that out. There we go, it's almost $17,000. Now, I'm wondering, why, what is she saving for? That's a lot of money just to have sitting in a savings account. Why aren't you investing that? Why is none of that invested? Unless they're saving up to go and buy something. That's the only situation where I think it's okay to have that much money in savings. Other than that, I would probably keep like three grand in savings, invest the rest of it, unless you're looking to buy like a house or something. So when it comes to health insurance here in Canada, it's actually free, which is really <laughs> cool. But when it comes to your prescription drugs, that's usually covered by your employer through insurance that would be deducted from your pay monthly. Yeah, they got a pretty decent health system. The only negative I've heard is that sometimes it, it, it takes a while to get in. Um, but other than that, I mean, just the fact that a lot of it's covered already, you don't have the, the crazy costs here in the United States are just, it, it's insane. It really is, it, it's ludicrous how much they charge. So I wouldn't say I'm necessarily comfortable with the salary that I'm making. And the reason being is just right now in the days that we're living in, you know, with me having debt, there's just so many expenses and it kind of just feels like I'm living to get by. Gosh, keep doing that, but, but plug, do more YouTube. Do more YouTube. I have a feeling if they if they really pursue the YouTube thing and just stay consistent with it and post like two times a week together, I really believe that should be able to make them like a thousand to three thousand dollars a month if they did that on the side. And that's savings. Guess what? You could save all of it. That's what you should do. Save a hundred percent of YouTube income and then fifty percent of what you make at your job. Ah, oh, you're gonna be you're gonna be swimming in money in a year swimming in it. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to CNBC Make It and Step in Den down below. All right, so I just subscribed to Step in Den. So my only critiques here is uh, where is it being invested? I, I know there's a big push on saving, but I think there should also be an equal push on investing the money as well. Uh, that's a lot of money to keep in a savings account without any purpose. Now, she didn't mention that she wants to go and like buy a house or do something like that. If that's the case, I agree. I think keeping the money in a high interest savings account until you get enough is really important. But it, what's the purpose of that? Just having that money sitting in savings, I think is, is a bit of a waste of the money unless there's a purpose for it. So my only recommendation here would be to invest the money. That's it. I would just say invest the money or invest 80% of it. That's it. Besides that, they're doing a great job. And then I would also just continue posting more on YouTube. Just keep posting as much as possible. And uh, wait, CNBC make it is 435,000 subscribers. How many subscribers do I have? Do I have more subscribers than them still? Hold on. 439,000 subscribers. Wow. Wow, CNBC Make It has been uh, getting a lot of subscribers lately. Wow. Okay, so so we're gonna be neck and neck here. It's gonna be a competition between me and CNBC Make It to see who could who could get the most subscribers. So I'm winning right now. So if you're watching this and you're not already subscribed, let's help. Let's help stay ahead of CNBC Make It by smashing the subscribe button, the like button, and the notification bell so YouTube notifies you anytime we post a video. So with that said, you guys, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Make sure to, to add me on my podcast. It's called the Iced Coffee Hour. New videos every single Sunday morning, 9 a.m. Make sure to add yourself to that. And finally, if you guys want your two free stocks, you're totally free. Use the link down below in the description and deposit $100 on a Weeble. And they're going to be giving you two free stocks with one of the stocks valued all the way up to $1,400. So if you want your two free stocks, use that link down below. Let me know which two free stocks you get. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time.